Jack Kemp and Margaret Thatcher, Mark, both were great Reagan allies, comrades in arms, inspirational figures. As a matter of Margaret Thatcher's wisdom comes to mind, I hear people when I was in the legislature say, well, we need to get out there and get consensus on this bill, see what consensus is. Margaret Thatcher had contempt for that view. She said, consensus is the death of leadership. Leadership is is a strong leader stepping forward and moving the issue in the direction that he or she knows that we need to move in and being able to persuade other members of your team that that is the North Star goal that we all need to be behind. And so, uh, Margaret Thatcher, probably number one, Jack Kemp, number two. Thanks, Peter. One minute for your answer on this question. In what specific ways would you help to support and unite the Republican Party in this district? I would build on my experience as a leader of our party over the last two decades in the Missouri Senate, winning our majority seat by seat. It was frustrating, often one step forward, two steps back, but I'm recognizing that a candidate who can win the district in Shannon County or Reynolds County might not be the same as a candidate who can win uh, a seat in Jefferson County, or I used to have the whole state. To, think of when I was Senate President Pro Tem, and I think of winning a, a, a seat for a Republican in, in Ladue and other parts of St. Louis County, and that was not like winning a seat in Southwest Missouri. So I have broad experience in team building, in unifying our party in all aspects of our conservative movement, including my Libertarian and Ron Paul friends, and my Tea Party friends who I welcome so warmly into the Republican Majority Coalition. All right, Peter, two minutes for this answer. Given the 8th District's vulnerability to natural disasters, what will your approach be to funding for FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers with the current budget crisis? Well, I take a tough look at those budgets, but obviously those are core functions of the federal government that we need to have ready and at the ready for any natural disaster or man-made disaster that comes our way. I've been involved in fighting floods. Uh, I, I was in the McBride Bottom on that morning in the summer of 1993 when the levee broke. I watched that heartbreaking scene. Uh, I, I've been involved in flood fights then and since. As acting governor, I called out the National Guard to fight a flood uh, back in uh, about 2007. So I have quite a bit of hands-on experience here, and we've got to make sure that the Corps of Engineers has the resources they need, but we also have to make certain that we have the, the attention of the Army Corps of Engineers when they undertake to cause a man-made catastrophe and, and blow up the levee down in Mississippi County, an event they've done twice, 1937 and last year. Uh, I want to make sure that there's accountability built into their budget and that they're listening to us and listening to the producers, the agribusiness producers, uh, who depend on that fertile ground, and all our uh, natural resources in the 8th District. Two minutes for this answer as well. What is your position on reauthorizing the 2008 Farm Bill, which expired September 38, 2012? I believe there should be a Farm Bill. The fact that there isn't is a failure of this Congress. I am not schooled in the individual details of this Farm Bill, and I won't tell you that I am. When I'm not, I would rely, as Bill Emerson, my boss, did, in the 80s and 90s on the uh, wisdom of people in this room and the wisdom of the people at the Farm Bureau who advised him and with whom I've worked and been endorsed by in all my campaigns. And, and, uh, but the fact that, that, that our current U.S. Congress cannot produce a farm bill uh, is, is, is a terrific indictment, an awful indictment of the dysfunction that is now reigning in Washington, D.C. And uh, I would go to work to try to remedy that dysfunction and plead with our, and, and, and bargain with our co-equal branch uh, in the United States Senate 
to produce a farm bill for sure. Again, two minutes for your answer. How would you support economic development in our 8th district? I would do it with the Emerson example in mind. I can tell you as a boy growing up here in southeast Missouri, we didn't have much communication in those days with our friends down in Springfield or on, even on the western end of this district. Why? Because Highway 60 was a winding pig path from here to Springfield, and it took you five hours to go from Cape Girardeau to Springfield. Bill Emerson rolled up his sleeves with United States Senator Kit Bond and the bill passed the torch to Joanne in 1996, and they did the hard work that completed Highway 60 as one of the finest new highways in the country uh, that I travel all the time, and that many of you travel to get over here today, as the four-lane highway that it is, and, and our infrastructure of that kind is the lifeblood of our economy. Our timber producers, our agribusiness producers of all kinds, uh, I've been active in the Southeast Missouri Regional Port Authority and helping all our ports up and down the Mississippi River before I went to Jefferson City in the Senate. I sat for six years on the SEMO Port Board. We have one of the finest ports out here on the Cape Scott County line that is a joint cooperative deal between Cape and Scott Counties. I led the effort to pass the sales tax back in 1985. We said it would be on for four years and go off, and we kept our word. The tax was voted by the people, it was gone for four years, and it went off. So I have a long history of fighting for our infrastructure needs to get product to market. This is your final question. You have one minute to answer. Washington seems to be in gridlock. When, if ever, do you feel it's appropriate to compromise? I, here's my view that I told Bob Holden when I was, is this a one minute or two? This is one minute. Okay, I told Bob Holden... Twelve years ago this month, he was coming in as governor. I said, I was uh, newly elected Senate president. I had a one-seat majority. I had a head full of blonde hair then, too. I had a one-seat majority, and the Democrats still had a huge majority in the House. And I told Governor Holden, I said, the elections are over. I'm a fierce competitor at election time. The people expect us to work together. Where I can, I will work together with you. We're devotion to principle. And constitutional government or constitutional government demands it, I will not compromise. And so I have bedrock conservative principles that I will not compromise on, both when it comes to producing a budget that is reasonable, in our case balanced, at the state of Missouri under difficult circumstances with declining state revenues, we still balance the budget, we made the tough cuts. Uh, I have a record of doing that. Still a head full of blonde hair. <laughs> it's blonder. Okay. <laughs> we, just, we just changed the word to platinum. You're okay. All right. You now have a minute and a half, Peter, for your closing statement when you're ready. Thank you, Fawn. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here, my fellow conservatives, my fellow Southern Missourians, to humbly lay my case before you. As I said in my opening remarks, I have a record of accomplishment. I have a record of achievement. I have a record of results for our district, and I have a record that I believe demonstrates beyond any doubt that this state is a more conservative state because I was in the fight in Jefferson City. I did not go up there to warm a seat. I went up there in the winter of 1993, very much in the minority at a time when Republicans were in the permanent minority for four plus decades. I went there to change the course of events in our state to move our state in a more conservative direction. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I have done. That is the results-oriented, team-building approach of conservative leadership for results for our state that I will take as I fight for you in Washington, D.C., should you be so kind as to honor me with this nomination. I will stand with you to build the Republican Party in your courthouses. I would like to live to see the day when St. Genevieve, a county as Democrat as St. Genevieve, has as many Republicans as Perry County, or Wright County, or Douglas County in the courthouse. And you know that I'll be there for that. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.